The shambling dead, they move through the underbrush. Otherworldly moans fill the air as they sniff for easy prey, surging towards any sound or fleeting glimpse of humanoids that fly. They move alone or in pairs, spreading throughout the forest. Thank you, Describe, for the excellent flavor text. And hello, everybody. Jordan here. The PH is silent. And welcome to the Ravenloft campaign setting, specifically Falcovnia and the nearby Necropolis, plus the second edition adventures that take place in those locations. And a potential zombie apocalypse might happen. Now, this is a mini-series on the Ravenloft campaign setting, which you can find the full playlist in the top right corner or in the doobly-doo down below. Falkovnia is in the northwestern area of the core. Now, since my last video, there have been a few comments saying that going forward, the core will no longer exist in Dungeons & Dragons lore. Now, as of publishing this video, the latest Ravenloft book, which is Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft, is not out. And I'm sure that there will be new Domains of Dread, as well as old ones with major changes. And if you're watching this and curious about the changes, I hopefully have made a video about it and have it linked in the description. Now, 4th edition lore bundled the Domains of Dread within the Shadowfell, which never really stuck right with me. And for 5th edition, if there is no core, like there was in 2nd edition, then I can only speculate how the Domains of Dread are going to be organized. Now, despite the Dark Domain changes, I do see the value in exploring older lore and how that lore has changed over time. I frequently find myself playing in older D&D settings using updated rules. There are a lot of fun worlds to explore, and you may enjoy a 2E approach to Ravenloft or a 5E one. Or you may be like me, read up on both of them and take the best parts for a custom campaign. Remember, it's your game. Have fun. Falkovnia is a dark land, full of towering black trees, and towards the east, though, there are a great many dead trees. Their leaves are now gone, and their bark has turned white. A rumor is that whenever the Dark Lord Vlad Drakov ex executes someone, a tree dies. Perhaps slowly, but some believe the trees actually ignite and quickly burn, giving them their white color. The people here are very oppressed. They are overtaxed, overworked, and frightened of Vlad Drakov. Specifically, his soldiers keep the people in line through fear and brutality. Now, soldiers represent the highest class in Falkovnian society, and Drakov rules Falkovnia with a brutal militia. People are executed for the smallest infractions or simply at his whim. The military can carry weapons, but civilians are forbidden, which keeps the military in power. Now, there are little to no prisons because those who break the law are dealt with swiftly, which increases the fear, and thus people don't break the law. The Dark Lord of Falkovnia is Vlad Drakov, who is, uh, from a literary point of view, the reimagining of Vlad the Impaler. However, this is the first Ravenloft domain of dread that we've explored that has pulled a character from a separate D&D setting. Vlad is from Kryn the world of Dragonlance. He is from the kingdom of Thanol, which lies on the continent of Taladas. He was a mercenary and was known for his brutal tactics, swearing allegiance to whomever paid him the most money. Now, as fate intervened in his life, the mists took him and his mercenary band into the realm of Azalin the Lich, which I haven't really discussed in depth yet, so don't worry. You're as caught up as I am. Now, Vlad thought he had discovered a new land that was ripe for conquering. Vlad Drakov started a pillaging and execution campaign throughout this domain of dread, killing those who resisted and impaling them on a pike. Vlad would sit and watch his Garden of Agony, as it was called. All of the people that he had murdered stuck up on pikes throughout the land. When the last person died and stopped moving, the dark powers intervened. Suddenly, Vlad's demented garden of bodies started moving. Everyone he murdered came back as a zombie, animated and vicious. They attacked Vlad and his men, forcing them to retreat back into the mists. The Dark Powers placed them into a new and separate domain where Vlad became the Dark Lord, and he named this new area Falkovnia. Vlad's punishment in Ravenloft is his rulership. Vlad Drakov wanted to rule to snub those who looked down upon him, and in the Domains of Dread, 
Vlad received what he wanted, his own domain and people to rule over. But this position of leadership was what he wanted, not necessarily what he desired. Unable to leave, he can never get the respect or the fear of his former masters, the ones back in Kryn who would never know the level of power Vlad carries in his domain. His eternal struggle is to assault a Zalin's land of Drakon over and over and over. Vlad wants to spread his domain, to spread his influence. He is led to believe by the dark powers that this is obtainable. However, he will never succeed in the way that he truly wishes. The endless zombies will never allow him to win. This Domain of Dread's gimmick is the zombies. Zombie hordes forming everywhere, creatures rising from their graves to battle our players. The adventures tied to this setting are called the Grim Harvest Trilogy. Now, these three modules could be run separately or together and detail Falkovnia's relationship with the Lich Azalin and his Domain of Dread. The first book, called Death Unchained, has our heroes arriving in Falkovnia via the mists. The adventure is a simple one, getting your players acclimated to Ravenloft and Falkovnia, and more or less, there's a necromancer causing problems and your party must investigate to discover what is really going on. Now, the second part of this trilogy is Death Ascendant, and this module takes the party between Domains of Dread, Falkovnia, and Darkon. You'll be hired to discover who's been killing members of the Ebon Fold, which is a group in Falkovnia. You'll find new types of zombies as you explore and make your way to Darkon. Now, Darkon, the neighboring domain, has some citizens that have made their way into Falkovnia. Those are Azalin's secret police, and they have brought to Falkovnia a device known as the Infernal Machine. This device transforms whoever is laid inside it into a powerful, lich-like creature. It needs life force, though, which the baddies of the module have been gathering with magical daggers. Now, you'll have to stop the Infernal Machine from being used and defeat the undead abomination that comes out of it. Finally, the last module is called Death Triumphant, and our heroes arrive in the town of il Aluk, which is the capital city and largest city of Darkon, the domain next to Falkovnia. They arrive on a unfortuitous evening known as Darkest Night, which is a time when the moon does not rise in Darkon. The night is so black that the locals fear any light will attract the undead, so all fires and lights are put out, creating the darkest night. As it so happens, our party runs into an NPC with a vision of the future. An old crone known as Grandmother Nichia finds our heroes stumbling in the dark of ill a look, and she warns them, everyone, everyone in the city will die at midnight, including the heroes unless a Zalin is stopped. She urges the heroes to prevent this. So in order to do so, they must descend into a prison located in the city called Grim Fastness. And I'm a sucker for old adventures and I find this one to be really interesting. It kind of reminds me of the other Ravenloft 2E adventure I examined, Vecna Reborn. Within Il Aluk and specifically down into the prison, the Lich Azalin has created a doomsday device which is a terrible name. That's literally the name he calls it. It's my doomsday device. I mean, you have all the cool fantasy worlds and mythological names and words and places and you go with a 1940s bad comic book sounding thing. Doomsday device? I mean, why don't we just call it Death Ray? Azalin is in the pit of this prison about to activate his doomsday device. At midnight exactly. The clock is ticking for our heroes, and wave after wave of zombies, vampires, mummies, and other undead prevent them from stopping the doomsday device. If it goes off, a large and strong connection to the negative energy plane appears and floods the entire city with negative energy. It washes over everyone in Il Aluk and transforms them, including the heroes, into undead. Now at this point, the mists of Ravenloft envelop the city of Il Aluk and transform it into its own domain of dread known as Necropolis. So when I originally was writing this, I didn't really understand, I didn't get the point across that I wanted to, which was that Necropolis was created by the Dark Powers as a domain within a domain. 
So Azalin still has his original domain, but something, this catastrophe of the negative energy plane opening up created a domain called Necropolis within that domain. So the city of Necropolis is now its own isolated domain of dread. Nothing living can enter Necropolis. The closer a living creature gets, the more life is drained from them until they ultimately die and become undead. The heroes of the adventure, once undead, aren't evil, They're, they aren't mindless, but they have been altered, possibly forever, for the worse. An entity known only as Death Itself now roams Necropolis, a very powerful entity that the heroes saw earlier with the Infernal Machine. Now, the so-called Lich that is created by that device was a creature known as Death. This was the prototype to the Doomsday device, which was to power up Azalin the Lich to free him from the Domains of Dread. Azalin was changed or evolved into death itself, and his goal becomes to destroy the heroes. So the heroes flee, hoping to escape the city and change their undead fate. The final showdown is surprise against death itself, with the heroes searching for Grandmother Nichia, who may or may not have a way to transform them back into a normal living creature. Adventures like these can be a lot of fun, if you think your group would enjoy playing through a bit of Ravenloft history or D&D history. I mean, to be the group that witnessed the city ill luck transform into the new city necropolis. I do enjoy adventures that have a timer going for the players. Will they get to the center of the prison in time? Uh, it forces your players to make those tough decisions. Do we fight or run? Because, I mean, we're on a clock here. You can find all of these titles linked down below in the doobly-doo. I'm sure once Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft arrives, there will be a 5th edition expansion on this lore and domain. These two domains have a tied history with Vlad originally trying to take over Azalin's domain, fleeing only to find undead everywhere. And I wonder if these two dark lords will be linked again. Thank you again, Describe, for your excellent collection of box text at the beginning of this video. Click the link in the description below to head to their website and be inspired for your next Ravenloft campaign. I'm still reading through tons of Ravenloft lore, so this mini-series will continue a few more weeks. Thanks again, patrons, for supporting the channel and this content. Thank you for watching, and if you feel so inclined, I'd love to have you subscribe. There's new videos every week and a large back catalog on Faerun lore, the Planes of Existence, Zakara, Spelljammer, and others. Thanks for watching, everyone. I will see you all in the next video.